And we are live, so welcome everybody as you're entering the uh, the Zoom room for this webinar. We'll be getting started on time, so that'll just be another minute from now. I'm just giving everybody a chance to uh, to log in and join us. And so the image on the screen as you're coming into this State of the Association is a picture of downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, where we just had our Catholic Leadership Summit last week. Resounding success had uh, over 280 superintendents, associate superintendents, friends from higher ed and other, other school leaders all together in Raleigh to, to talk about the great, uh, the great opportunities of the day for Catholic education. So it was a very um, faith-filled, inspired group of leaders talking about the topics we should consider as Catholic schools, in particular, a great panel uh, regarding uh, the Latino community engagement and enrollment. And that was led by friends from LMU, from Notre Dame and from Boston College and practitioner panels regarding the same topic, as well as hiring for mission and all sorts of sessions with superintendents and other friends leading the conversation. So it was a wonderful week of fellowship. Those of you that were just there, thank you for joining us again as we uh, present this encore edition of the State of, State of the Association. Yeah, thank you for that, Lincoln. I will start our introduction here as we've had a fair amount of people join in. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this professional learning opportunity. I am Angela Lazar, Digital Project Coordinator from NCEA, and I will be facilitating this webinar today. So just a few housekeeping notes as people are joining in. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the Q&A window. To use the Q&A window, you have to hover your mouse over on the Zoom screen, and you will see a Q&A button on the bottom, and you can type your question there. We will have time at the end to answer your specific questions. So today is the State of Association webinar, where you, where you will learn more about NCEA's budget, investment in new programs and services, and how NCEA is responding to current trends in Catholic education. This session is an encore presentation from CLS 2023 in Raleigh. Our speaker today is Lincoln Snyder, who is president and CEO of National Catholic Education Association. And he led the organization's recovery post COVID and stabilizing finances, as well as expanding member benefits. Formerly, he was the superintendent for the Diocese of Sacramento, and he oversaw the transition to a unified governance model for elementary schools and managed crises like the campfire and the pandemic. With a background in international politics from Georgetown University and a master's in Lasallian leadership from St. Mary's University in Minnesota, Lincoln resides in Northern Virginia with his wife and three teenage sons and finds enjoyment in lengthy walks and learning new languages during his downtime. Thank you for joining us today, Lincoln, and please feel free to take it away. Thank you so much, Angela, and it's, it's great to have everybody here. So thank you for joining us today for this webinar on the State of the Association. This is the second uh, State of the Association address I've, I've given since starting, and uh, it's a really enjoyable thing for us to be able to, to look back on the year past and reflect on uh, what we have done in, in service to this mission of spreading Christ's gospel and assisting you in what you do as direct witnesses to, to students in the schools that you serve. So as always, I would like to take a moment to begin in prayer. I have a prayer link here. Uh, and I would like to share one of my favorites, which I'm sure many of you have heard, and it's called Prophets of a Future, Not Our Own. So let us take a moment to place ourselves in the holy presence of God, as we offer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom of God always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. 
This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. And as always, we ask the Lord's help in achieving all that we do in service to his mission and his kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, again, thank you for joining me for this talk about the state of the association. This will be about a 30-minute talk. Uh, if you have questions, please drop them into the chat, and then we'll have a time to discuss them at the end. Just in a broad overview, uh, some of the things I'm going to be talking about is an uh, update to our org chart. Uh, I'll talk about the association's financial results. I'll talk about our new strategic plan and our new content map that's going to guide how we interact with you and over the coming year. I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of trends in education and then forecast a little bit of what's to come. So just a bit about NCEA. So as, as uh, your association for Catholic schools, we're the largest private professional education association in the world. And we work with Catholic educators across all 50 states, territories, District of Columbia, um, to support the church and its teaching mission. And so membership includes 140,000 educators serving 1.7 million Catholic students in Catholic education in the United States and its territories. And before I get into a lot of talk about sums and figures and, and things that we're doing, I thought it was important to share what is the best part of the year for us. I mean, we have a, a an awards program called the Youth Virtues, Valor, and Vision Awards. And we're very grateful for the opportunity to present these to you, the membership. Uh, you know, we, uh, as, as an association, mostly focus on adult ed, but we have a couple of really neat opportunities to to be in touch with students in schools and, and why VVV is one of the, the most enjoyable things that we do. So I wanna share three stories with you that I think illustrate what's great about Catholic schools. You know, we know that our mission is valuable because it is irreplaceable. We are asking the Lord's call to the great commission to make disciples of all nations. But, but for us as Catholic educators in the United States, that means that we're giving children a transformative education that we know that only we and our direct personal witness to Jesus can offer, knowing that he touches their hearts through our ministries. Cooper's a great example of this. So Cooper's in seventh grade. Uh, he's from St. Louis, Missouri at St. Francis of Assisi School. So he's 12 years old. And over four years ago, uh, he found out, well, he's known since first grade, that he has a, a condition called Stargardt's disease that's going to result in progressive blindness. And so Cooper has spent his youth organizing a walking team to support foundation fighting blindness in a thing called the St. Louis Vision Walk. So um, Cooper has always excelled at a student and he's decided to champion a cause that he knows that although may not um, affect everybody immediately is investing in a future where other people can benefit from his actions now. So congratulations to Cooper. So a little bit about your association. I have here an, an image of the org chart that we've uh, organized in our ministry to support you, uh, the direct educators. And so we've grown from uh, a gone from an association of around 30 some odd employees pre-COVID to going down to a much smaller group during the pandemic, a team of 13 when I started. We're now at 25 employees as your association. And uh, we have organized into five different departments. We have an office of member services under the leadership of our VP of member services, Wade Marshall. So you're, many of you are hearing from them right now about renewing or joining NCEA. We have an office of finance under executive vice president, Melissa Mercer. We have an office of marketing and business development. So they focus on the outward bound communications, uh, the business relationships that we have uh, and our marketing campaigns. Angela, whom you've just met, is a proud member of this team. It's led by uh, Crystal Berry, Executive Vice President of Marketing and Business Development. We have an Office of Content and Engagement, and this is the main point of relationship in terms of the things that we do in service to you, in terms of the content that we offer in service to you as, as your association. So we are currently looking for a new Vice President of Content and Engagement uh, that is posted 
on our website. So if you're interested, please check out our website or reach out to one of us and we can uh, direct you to that job posting. But this ties together our work in the area of public policy under the leadership of Sister Dale McDonald, our professional learning, uh, and our engagement work uh, into one story that that we're really looking forward to uh, to telling. And so I'll be talking more about the work of content and engagement later today when I present about our content map. And then our fifth department is a new one for us as NCEA. We have a new Office of Strategy and Applied Insights under the leadership of Executive Vice President Josh Packard. This brings together a few things that were parked in different areas before. You know, as you know, we do an annual uh, data book uh, that is actually one of the core things that we do uh, in our ministry is we, we are the keepers of the census for Catholic schools. And so um, things like the data book and the other research projects that we've done uh, are with this team, as well as all of our work uh, with NCEA RISE, which is our family of catechetical assessments. So in the interest of transparency, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about financial highlights from the past year for NCEA. So our total revenue this past year was $5.8 million. And we grew revenue by almost a million dollars last year. So growing from uh, a number that had fallen to the low fours uh, during the pandemic, uh, we're growing back to, to revenue about the size of what we had pre-pandemic. Uh, in terms of how we performed financially, uh, so we had a cash loss. We used about $13,000 more in cash than we brought in last year. So basically, we broke even. Our accrual operating loss was $148,000 for last year. Um, and our total liquidity is around $8.4 million. So that number is the amount of cash and cash equivalents we have uh, on hand in our bank accounts and in our quasi-endowments quasi and other funds that we have. So... And we're finally, we're projecting a, a profit, an operating profit for next year, i.e. this year's budget um, of $193,000. So what this means is uh, NCEA, NCEA is healthy. Uh, we've been growing. Uh, we And you'll see we've had some good years of gain. We've used that to grow our team again so we can offer more services. Uh, we're in a really good spot financially, very close to breaking even, which as a nonprofit is our goal. The next two slides tell the story of where the money came from and where it's going. So as many of you know, because you've been kind enough to, to subscribe or to join the association and pay your dues, we, we are uh, in large part funded by our membership dues. That represents about 40% of our total revenue. Uh, the second biggest source of revenue is our convention, which is our uh, big event that we run every year. It's going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania this uh, April. So please plan on joining us for NCEA 2024 in Pittsburgh this, this coming Easter week. Um, and then 16%, almost a million dollars of our revenue comes from institutional, institutional sponsorships. So that's underwriting from our corporate partners. And as you can see that we have a variety of other revenue sources. Um, it's important for us to find other ways to fund NCEA than just your dues. We know that, that your dues are a sacrifice that as a Catholic school serving as a ministry to so many people in so many ways that um, that money is precious to you. And so we want to be a good value to you. And we also want to look for other ways to fund all the things we do besides just your membership dues. And then where does the money go? So a uh, little bit over half of our expenses are our personnel costs. So there'd be salary and benefits uh, for those uh, 25 souls I, I spoke to when I was presenting the org chart. Our second biggest expense is the uh, our convention services. And then there's a whole other variety of smaller expenses that we bring on. So we have those listed here. So again, a lot like our schools, uh, personnel costs are our biggest expense. And again, in the spirit of uh, transparency, we're presenting to you here uh, our uh, financial information. This is very high level for the past six years, how we've performed. And so I really want to tell a story about an act in threes on this. So NCEA pre-pandemic and going into the pandemic had had um, three years that were a little bit more challenging for our budget, as you can see. But then you see starting in 2021, coming out of the pandemic, we've grown the association, we've had good financial results, uh, and uh, we uh, are very confident about the financial health that we've enjoyed. So the story here is that, um, with yes, we had some challenges pre-pandemic and going into the pandemic, but coming out of the pandemic, we've grown, 
we're stable and we're very proud of the value we've been able to uh, give you, our members, as you pursue your ministries and look to us for support. So as I transition to the next uh, segment of the State of the Association, I wanted to share another story with you about one of our YVVV award winners. Um, so Sharia Jadav is in 12th grade in Evansville, Illinois at Reeds Memorial High School. And I thought his story was really neat too, because it showed what the call to service in Christ that we teach in our schools can actually result in the real world in real time from creative students. So during the pandemic, Sharia felt strongly that he needed to do something to fill a need that was not being met in supporting our first responders. And so he had learned to operate 3D printers uh, at his school. And he employed those printers to produce over 1,500 pieces of personal protective equipment uh, that were shipped to people in need, and particularly our uh, first responders that were on the front lines of the COVID pandemic. And so, uh, of course, at some point, the, the market started producing these things, uh, and uh, uh, Sharia was able to step back. But uh, again, this was um, answering Christ's call to service in action. Uh, and uh, a really exemplary story. So we were very proud to offer him a YVV or, award this past year. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our update to our strategic plan right now. It's the next part of the conversation. So last year, I shared with you our updated mission and vision statement. I, I think the important thing to emphasize for us here is that as a ministry of the church, we are pursuing a particular charism in support of schools. Uh, we feel very strongly that, that that charism of convener is central to our role as your Catholic association. And we focused in this mission statement on a few key areas uh, beyond that, that act of convening itself. Professional development, data, public policy, and resources to support faith and intellectual formation. And per our vision, we want to be your trusted power in empowering schools and Catholic schools and communities to flourish spiritually, academically, and operationally. Not incidentally or coincidentally, uh, your NCEA team has taken on the challenge to cultivate four values or virtues we think that are really important to this charism, mission, and vision, as well as supporting the strategic plan we put in place. And so those four those four values that we're returning to time and again in our own conversations are the value of the virtue of trust, of profound hospitality, of gratitude, and of a growth mindset. So you're going to see these values and, and themes popping up on our correspondence. You'd certainly see them um, hopefully in our behavior as we welcome you to things like NCEA 2024. These are really important to us and we think central to answering, uh, answering the call of our charism of convener. So at a higher level of detail, uh, the, the NCEA Board of Directors has approved a, a strategic plan, just uh, ratified it in May uh, for the next, for the coming years. And that focuses on, on strengthening uh, and the organization, focusing on five different areas, operational excellence, membership success, resource development, programs, events, and services, and marketing communications. So in the area of operational excellence, we have a few main goals. Uh, one of them is to continue to be financially responsible without compromising mission by ensuring that expenses do not exceed revenue while pursuing the broadest membership base possible. What's important to us is that yes, as, as, um, as a ministry that operates in the world, we have to make sure that we're uh, spending less than we're bringing in. But we're also committed to serving the broadest base of membership possible. As you saw, we're, our membership dues actually constitute less than half of our money in. So we are not going to trade accessibility for profitability. Uh, we're very much committed to that ministry of serving all Catholic schools in the United States. We know that we have to recruit and retain excellent staff who are committed to the mission and to serving members. And then the board also has some goals around uh, strengthening the board um, with recruitment, with uh, the governance model and taking steps to make sure that uh, we are all prepared to serve. Membership success was the second area of the strategic plan. And we want to make sure that we're serving all current members and that we're also re-engaging 
our LAPS members to make sure that we, we are an association that as a ministry truly serves all 5,900 Catholic schools. Uh, we know part of that ministry, again, honoring that charism of conveners, connect, convener is connecting members to each other, uh, both nationally as well as at the state and regional level. We want to make sure that we're a respected source of support for dioceses and schools without other means. One of, one of the uh, interesting facts about our uh, ministry is that 40 dioceses nationally have a superintendent's office where it's the superintendent and that's it. So we also have superintendent's offices with over 100 employees. And so there's a tremendous diversity of, of need and resources across the country. We want to make sure that we are a respected source of support for everyone. And we also want to make sure that you, uh, every member, has a person within the NCEA who is known, who is trusted, and that is a respected point of contact for you that really um, you can have a direct relationship with and call whenever you have questions or need support. The next area of the strategic plan was around re resource development. We know that we want to keep membership affordable and that the uh, pathway to that is making sure that we're going grants, growing philanthropy, and looking for other sources of support for a budget that aren't based on dues. So to that end, uh, we plan on creating a comprehensive development and fundraising plan, as well as recruiting and hiring a director of philanthropy who can help spearhead those efforts. And we are very grateful for the corporate partner support and philanthropic support that allows us to do what we're doing. So uh, this is an incredibly important thing for us to make sure that we stay accessible to you, the members. The fourth pillar of the plan was programs, events, and services. So I'm going to be talking about our content map at length in the next section, but our goal has been to now make sure that our content aligns across channels and that we're giving you resources that you need in the right format at the right time. We want to make sure that our content's based on research, that we understand needs, we understand student needs and community needs. Uh, we want to make sure that we're paying attention to the great trends of the era and help our members, the schools, uh, address those. In particular, uh, making sure that we are doing everything we can to help uh, serve as a bridge to the growing Hispanic community as Catholic schools uh, look to, uh, to serve that community. Uh, we want to make sure we're designing, engaging in innovative events. Uh, we are investing in our family of catechetical assessments and CEA RISE. We continue to support superintendents in initial on and ongoing training. And then we also have training, uh, re recruitment and formation support for principals and teachers. We had a great conversation at CLS around the question of hiring for mission. We have our uh, jobs page, and uh, we also offer a variety of, of PLCs and other groups to make sure that we're supporting principals and teachers directly. In our marketing and communications pillar, we want to make sure that we are being very intentional and in engaging all of our members and potential members so we can communicate all of the benefits of NCEA membership well, make sure that we're uh, accessible and used. We want to make sure that we are maintaining strong and consistent relationships with national media outlets to, to lead in storytelling around Catholic schools. There's been a lot of good news about our mission in these past years as the Catholic school network has grown. We have a lot of external stakeholders like the USCCB, uh, the ACCU, the US Department of Education and others with whom we have to have good relationships. And so we're really busy engaging with them to promote the value of NCEA and Catholic schools. And then we also wanna make sure that we're communicating data, stories and other resources to you to help you promote the value of Catholic schools. So this would be things like our Catholic Schools Week materials, giving you every opportunity to uh, to draw on these resources and, and uh, share those stories with your own communities. So that was our strategic plan. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about our content map because I, I think that this is where the abstract actually becomes something concrete for, uh, for you, our members. And so we have taken everything we do as an association, everything we teach, everything we present as an association and grouped it to 11 different learning arcs. Some of these learning arcs are eternal. They're going to be ones that we're gonna come back to year after year. Uh, and we call those evergreen. And then we have our interim learning arcs. And so it doesn't mean that we're not going to stick with them for a period of time, but these are things we've decided to create a learning arc around that are the great themes of the day that we really feel like should be resourced and addressed. So what do I mean by this? For our evergreen learning arcs, you can expect NCEA to always lead with Christ. And so our first arc is called Centered in Christ. We know that we're 
trusted in particular to support you, the schools and school leaders with uh, professional development and formation in the area of religious education and your own spiritual development. We're going to be talking about student learning expectations, also in the, the interest of academic excellence. We're going to have inspiring leadership as a learning arc. We'll have data culture, in particular, understanding things like uh, our data book or, or data in general as it comes, it comes um, to our Catholic schools, understanding what the data means, helping interpret it, and helping apply it so we can all grow and succeed. Our fifth arc that we're, we view as evergreen is the Nesbex, which many of you have uh, a lot of experience and familiarity with. And so we'll be talking about the Nesbex in perpetuity. Public policy is our sixth theme. And it's currently under the leadership of Sister Dale McDonald, who has done a tremendous job in advocating for Catholic schools at, uh, at the federal level for decades, uh, and also does some really good training and understanding federal programs and other public policy programs and issues to make sure that our schools are our school students are getting uh, uh, every benefit they can from uh, from what's offered. And then finally, legal issues. We have uh, a long history of publishing textbooks and then offering a law symposium every year on, on the law and how it, it um, affects Catholic school. So those are our evergreen learning arcs. Now, we also have interim learning arcs, and we expect these to last for a period of years, but they're going to have a discrete arc with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, we're going to be investing very heavily in telling these stories. We really think that they are at the heart of our challenges and opportunities as Catholic schools. And we want to tell these stories well. The first three all have to do with affiliation and belonging. And we really do believe that our, our Catholic schools are a trem tremendous instrument of evangelization for the church. We think they are a tremendous uh, foundation for each of the communities that our schools serve. And we want to make sure that we're paying attention to learning arcs around this notion of affiliation, belonging, and how we can serve schools and communities better. So we're viewing this through three lenses, uh, students, teachers, principals, and diocesan leaders, and affiliation of families in the broader community. So the lens is really going to matter to us as we do our storytelling over the coming years. I'll give you an example of this. So one of our major topics of the Catholic Leadership Summit this past week in Raleigh uh, was uh, Latino and Hispanic community engagement. And we spent a lot of time on that topic. We believe it's a very important topic for the for the health of the and growth of the church and the sustainability and growth of our schools. But we told that story through the lens of affiliation and belonging. So we are viewing it through the communitarian lens and not just through a transactional one. So these lenses really matter and how the stories fit in really matter to us. And then the last uh, of the interim arcs is academic recovery. You know, Catholic schools have done an exceptional job post COVID uh, or and during COVID of, of mitigating uh, learning loss for our students. But we know that our kids are still a little bit behind where they would have been had there not been a pandemic. And so we want to make sure that we're paying attention to that. And I'm going to speak a little bit more to that at the end. So as we're coming toward the end, I wanted to share another story that I really found really inspirational. Uh, and it's just amazing what one student who hear Christ's call can do. Uh, so Ella is a student uh, in the ninth grade now at the Academy of the Holy Names in Albany, New York, Diocese of Albany. Sarah, when she was nine years old, became aware of homelessness and the need to feed the hungry across her community. And she mobilized. And so, but began with rather modest personal efforts has resulted in her working through her, uh, through, through a, a project she calls Project Ella that has prepared more than 7,000 meals, given out more than 3,000 dozen eggs and supplied local food pantries with more than 10,000 items. Uh, her motto is you can't dream if you are hungry. And so Ella, and all of her fellow students in Catholic schools are responding to that great commission that the good Lord gave us in service to them, making disciples of all nations. So this is discipleship in action, and it is that combination of, of virtue and faith and answering a call to service, and then also taking all of the skills and abilities that students learn through Catholic schools and putting them to service for others that really makes our system so unique. So finally, 
NCEA offers a whole host of member benefits. And so I just wanted to speak to those as we come to the end of our presentation. All right. So we have, of course, a lot of work we do behind the scenes for you in public policy and advocacy. And so know that, that NCEA uh, is part of the team that represents the interests of our schools as we make sure that our religious liberties are protected and that our students can benefit from the federal programs to which they're entitled. We offer annual events. Uh, and so, as I said, we've got a convention coming up and uh, from April 2nd to 4th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We just finished our Catholic Leadership Summit. And uh, we also have regional conferences. So we just did one in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in the month of September. We're looking forward to doing more regional conferences as we uh, emerge from, from the pandemic. And then finally, we offer an annual law symposium. We offer all sorts of resources in the area of professional development and faith formation, starting with our catechetical uh, assessments, NCE Rise. We have a whole host of virtual learning offerings. We have live and on-demand webinars. We have discounts on our bookstore, and we have been uploading all sorts of titles as PDFs that'll be freely available to members if you want to check out our back catalog. Uh, we have access to our current research and data, and we're also really proud of uh, the response, uh, the work we've done and the response we've gotten to trying to create virtual professional learning communities. So it's a lot of fun for us as your convener to bring educators and ministers together uh, to support each other. And we have a lot of resources available to our members to help support strengthening communities. So I've spoken to our awards programs. We have recognition both for adults and for students. Uh, we have an online day of giving campaign. We have things like our career center. Uh, we have our uh, Catholic Schools Week events that, that we've been proud to sponsor for decades, and then all sorts of partner products, service discounts, and other things that, that can benefit your school. Finally, we're known for my Momentum magazine, and we've got our blog, uh, downloadable publications, our weekly newsletter that goes out to over 40,000 Catholic educators, and uh, a new service that we've been uh, collecting information for called the NCEA Collective. So that's a chance for you are members to share ideas, practices, and materials with each other. And finally, I wanted to speak to one really exciting event that we've put in place, uh, or that not, sorry, excuse me, speak to one exciting uh, event that we've partnered with. So this has been in place for years across dozens of dioceses, and we've collaborated uh, with the founders of the Academic Junior High Decathlon to turn it into a national Catholic academic junior high decathlon. So we have hundreds of schools and dozens of dioceses across the United States now uh, that are uh, hosting and creating teams uh, for an, a, an academic decathlon for their junior high students. And this is a really neat opportunity for uh, students of an academic bent uh, to, uh, to compete and to succeed, an event that supports faith formation and uh, academic growth um, in a really, really positive environment. So if you're looking for more information, please Google it. We have it on our website. So the last thing I wanted to speak to was a personal appeal. So many of you uh, probably saw news around the 2022 NAEP results. Uh, and the, so this is the nation's report card. It's an apples to apples comparison that the a group associated with the US Department of Education does every year in which they go out and they take a random sampling and test kids across schools and see how they're doing in fourth grade and eighth grade in reading and math. So the good news is, is the Catholic schools did really well in this, or Catholic school students did really well in this assessment. So we were very proud to share this data back last year, nationally and with our communities, about how our Catholic school students have achieved in reading and in math. Again, our Catholic schools, thanks to the heroic witness of our teachers, did a great job of, of keeping learning going during a really tough time. But um, not every school that has been invited to participate in the NAEP has participated. In fact, that number for our Catholic schools participating has dropped below 70%. It's fallen to a lever, level rather that unfortunately we're at risk of our friends at the National Center for Education Statistics not being able to include us in the next generation of NAEP results. So if you're a school leader at a school that receives an invitation to participate in the NAEP, please do. Our success in this area is very important to our overall storytelling. 
Again, it reflects really well on all of your hard work and support of our students. It's a story we want to tell. So you need to participate in NAEP, please, if you get the invitation. Um, it's a great thing for our students and for our schools. So that brings to an end my presentation on the state of the association. Uh, again, our uh, upcoming convention is Easter week in Pittsburgh. It's going to be a great time, and we're hoping to see you all there and meet you in person. So thank you for your time and for your attention today. And I'm, I'm sure we have some questions, Angela. At this point in time, I have not seen any questions. However, if we do receive any questions, we will let you know after the webinar. So thank you so much for presenting, Lincoln. We appreciate your time. <clears throat> and thank you so much, everyone, for attending today's NCEA webinar. To learn more about any upcoming webinars, <clears throat> please visit the ncea.org slash webinar. And have a great week. Thank you so much. God bless everyone. Thank you.